Well, for more on this, then, France 24's Chief Foreign Affairs Editor Rob Parsons joins me now on set. Uh, so, Rob, there's a delay, but I imagine this doesn't necessarily come as a surprise. No, not, not at all. I mean, the, the fact that they managed to get it ar arranged at all was an achievement. You know, the, the complications involved in negotiating something like this when everything is having to be done by proxy, as it were, you know, through the mediation of someone else, in this case, uh, Qatar and Egypt, uh, and bear in mind that obviously the, ma the main negotiator for the uh, Hamas side, Yahya Sinwa, Yah Sinwa, is in Gaza, somewhere underground. We don't know where. The Israelis have no idea where, and he's make it's in his interest to make sure they never find out. So how do you communicate? You know, what are the, the channels of communication? Very, very difficult when you're trying to put together an agreement as complicated as this one with all kinds of little complications about you know, how you go about the process of, ar of arranging the transfer of prisoners and that sort of thing. You know, the basic logistics of making something like this work. And apparently uh, what's been going uh, wrong over the last 24 hours is confusion, or if going wrong is the right word to use, but confusion about who is actually on the list this time round. Uh, so far, Qatar and Hamas haven't signed on to it, not because they're opposing the deal, it seems, but because of that confusion. So this, th there are a lot of people that are kind of anxiously awaiting uh, yeah. th this deal, especially uh, the hostages themselves and, of course, their families and relatives that have been waiting to find out more about how they're doing and if they are on the list. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the uncertainty must be almost unbearable. You know, now that they, 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 you know, they, for, for weeks that they must have sort of hardened themselves to the situation and now they've been given this glimmer of hope, it makes it even more painful because their optimism is lifted and then knocked down again by the, the announcement that it's not going to happen in the next 24 hours and then lifted again by the, the announcement that it looks like it's going to happen again on Friday. But they still don't know who's on the list. They don't know uh, if their family members are going to be on the first day announcement of 10 to 12 people or not. So people's hopes are excited, but they, they, they have no idea for certainty whether they're going to be on the list. And at the same time, you know, they're, they're uncertain about what their own government is, is planning to do, what its priorities are. You know, we've heard this debate in Israeli society and in government about what the priority should be. Should it be to eliminate Hamas? Should it be to get the hostages back? Uh, you know, th those things obviously prey on the minds of the people who are waiting in Israel, uh, worrying desperately about the, the future uh, of their loved ones and family members. Uh, and on the other side, they know that from Hamas's point of view, uh, the longer they keep the hostages, the more hostages they keep, the more they will have a sense that they've got a security policy in place, that it will make it much more difficult for Israel to go after them. So, you know, Hamas has a vested interest in making sure it clings on to those hostages for as long as possible. Uh, meanwhile, of course, as long as this uh, this temporary ceasefire does not take place, uh, military operations are, of course, still ongoing. Yeah. Uh, and the Israelis have made absolutely clear uh, that they will continue, you know, there will be a pause, and that is the word that they're using, not a ceasefire, a temporary pause of four days for the agreement to take place, and with the possibility uh, after the end of the four days that if, this, if Hamas release another 10 to 12 hostages, there will be a, a one-day extension for a maximum of up to 10 days. But the aim, as Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister, made clear speaking on, uh, on Wednesday, is that they will go after Hamas with the aim of completely eliminating Hamas so there will be no further security threat from Gaza to Israel once this, this war is over. So you know, we can absolutely expect that the fighting will continue, that the Israelis will continue to press hard. They've got four divisions. Uh, that's between 50 and 80,000 men on the ground in Gaza. And they're there for a purpose, and that is, as they put it themselves, to eliminate Hamas. In the last 24 hours, uh, we're told there have been 300 attacks by the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, on targets in Gaza. So that gives you an idea of, 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 of what it's like. Uh, and in that time, of course, and in this delay, you know, no aid is getting in. Uh, that, w we tend to forget, apart from the hostages being exchanged, this is an opportunity for desperately needed aid, especially fuel, you know, to, to get sanitation plants going, you know, desalination plants going, you know, water to flow. You know. 
incubation units to get moving in, in hospitals, all those sort of things which, depending on fuel, which hasn't managed to get up until now, again on hold. Rob Parsons, uh, thank you very much.